If you're into sampling, you've probably tried techniques such as chopping, stretching, and reversing. However, there are a lot more ways you can manipulate a sample. In this video, I'm going to show you three advanced sampling techniques you should try. The first technique is what I like to call the mix and match, essentially taking multiple hero samples and skillfully combining them together. I think a great example of this would be Too Long by Daft Punk. The starting percussion groove is from a song called First Come First Serve by Rose Royce. The duo sped up the sample, pitched it up, and put a high pass filter on it. The other hero sample they used was from a song called Running Away by Maze. They isolated a few sample chops, then filtered them, pitched them up, and reordered them. So to demonstrate this mix and match technique, I started a project in Bitwig Studio. This is one of the newest DAWs on the scene, and we have it available on Splice Rent to Own. Here are the drums that I'm going to lay some samples over. So at this point I want to find multiple samples to weave into one new story. And I thought it would be fun to find different samples from different decades. So I stumbled upon a song from the 80s called Yearning for Your Love by The Gap Band. I like the sample around here. In Bitwig Studio you can control the stretching mode on the left hand side in the inspector. You can use the numbers one through five to switch through your tools. I'm gonna to use five to switch to the knife tool. And now this is the fun part of stretching the sample to hear it in different perspectives. I took some time and found these chops. Now to mix and match this sample, I picked a song from the 70s, which is Love Hangover by Diana Ross. Now one of the challenges of mixing and matching samples is getting them in the same key. You can use spectrum analyzers or plugins, but I like to use a keyboard and just go up chromatically until it sounds like it's in home base. This note sounds close, but it might be the fifth of the scale, so I'm going to continue. And it sounds like the root is G. So let's find the key of the second sample. I like to snip it. Think about it all the time. So it sounds like E flat minor. I'm going to tune it up one semitone to E minor. Think about it all the time. And then this part works really well for a transition. Finally, I want to add a newer sample. So I'm going to add splice bridge. This allows you to transpose all your samples to a single key when previewing. It's super helpful for getting new melodic ideas in. All right, so the next technique you should try is called resampling. So resampling is essentially when you take a source sample, add further effects processing, and record it into a new sample. You can do this in any DAW by loading your source sample onto an audio track, then add a second audio track. Set the input to your source sample and then arm the track. At this point, load some of your favorite sound design plugins on your source track. And this is the fun part where you hit record and play with the parameters and just see what you get. Every time Bitwig loops, it'll capture a new take. You can easily choose selections from each take afterwards. Bitwig makes it really easy to select takes. All you have to do is double click the clip and then you can select the best part of each take in the edit window. I find this resample technique works really well for percussion loops and ear candy. I'm going to add in a melodic loop from Splice. All the sounds will be in the description. 
So I made an 808 pattern here. One tip I have is to check your 808s at a high octave. This is a great way to check if your 808s are in the same key with the rest of your track. Resampling also works really well with melodic sounds. I'm going to use Koso, a new app by Splice, to find something to resample. Koso generates stacks of sounds that play in key and tempo with each other. I like this, so I'm going to get a link to download the sounds. So at this point, we can group the three layers and resample them. Yeah, I really like these quick chops. It sounds very different from the original. Let's try to hear it in context of a beat. And finally, the third advanced technique you should try is granular synthesis. This method blurs the line between sampling and synthesis because it's essentially sampling small grains of audio, generally less than 100 milliseconds in duration. Using this technique, you can transform virtually any sound into a synth. Simply drop a sound into your favorite sampler that supports looping. Set the loop length to be really, really short and use the loop length and crossface to make it sound musical. There's also a few ways to do this while retaining the identity of the original sample. You can use plugins like Pigments or Astra to load samples into their granular engines. From there, you can use the parameters to sculpt the sound. You can make things really interesting by assigning modulators to all of those parameters. I'm going to try to flip this sample using the granular engine in Bitwig Sampler. One of the best things about Bitwig Studio is the fact that you can modulate about any parameter. I'm going to randomize where this sample plays back from. After adding some reverb, I feel like this is definitely worth resampling. So as you can see, all these techniques can be used in conjunction with each other. I hope you learned something new and gained some inspiration. If you did, like and subscribe. All the software and sounds will be linked in the description. And as always, stay inspired, stay creative. I'll catch you all later.